90 reason. Reason number eight is written by Reza Aslan. Dr. Reza Aslan is an internationally acclaimed writer and scholar of religions. He's an associate professor of creative writing at the University of California, Riverside, at the founder and the founder of AslanMedia.com. Reason number eight. Obama understands the promise and perils of the new global order in a way his opponent does not. The difference between Barack Obama and Mitt Romney is not solely a matter of policy or priorities. The difference is about something more fundamental and significant to the lives of every American. It is the difference of worldviews. If you want to know how Mitt Romney views the world, you need to focus not focus on his train wreck that was his recent junket to England, Israel, and Poland. True, the former governor's first foray into foreign affairs gave America a glimpse of what a Romney presidency would look like to the rest of the world. The results were not encouraging. In England, Romney managed to alienate every, nearly the entire British people by questioning their preparedness for the Olympics. In Israel, he delivered a shockingly ignorant speech in which he blamed the massive disparity in GDP between Israel and Palestine, not only on 40 years of Israeli military occupation, but on cultural differences. In Poland, Romney was denounced and boycotted by the party of his host, Lech Walesa, because of his assaults on American labor unions. Yeah, like Valesa. Thank good for you. The foibles and uh, th these foibles and many others led the political editor of London's Daily Mail, James Kaplan Chapman, to tweet, "Do we have a new W on our hands?" Chapman may not realize how right he might be. Indeed, the true revelation of Romney's worldview did not come during his disastrous trip overseas. It came before he left the U.S. soil. On the eve of his departure, Romney gave a much anticipated speech to the veteran of foreign wars. Laying out the first, for the first time his foreign policy philosophy. In that speech, Romney described his vision for America on the global stage by using a term that has become so toxic, so outmoded, so universally proven to be a dangerous, self-destructive, and intellectually bankrupt expression of the global order that until Romney revived it in his remarks at the VFA, most Americans assumed they would never hear it again. Romney called for a new American century. The phrase sounded so similar to anyone who was not living under a rock for the last decade. It is the manifesto of the thankfully defunct think tank, the Project for New American Century, whose promotion of a unipolar world dominated by America's untrammeled military right or might was wholeheartedly adopted by the George W. Bush, administ Bush administration. The result? The ca catastrophic war in Iraq, an ill-conceived war on terror, the erosion of American civil liberties, the loss of American influence around the world, hundreds of thousands of lives lost overseas, and trillions upon trillions of dollars of debt at home. This is the legacy of the new American century, and it is the legacy Mitt Romney seems all too eager to revive, which may, whoop, crud, which may... Uh, let's see. Which may explain why 15 of the 22 people on Romney's foreign policy team worked for George W. Bush. Six of them were members at PNAC. God did not create this country to be a nation of followers. America is not destined to be one of several equally balanced global powers. Romney delivered at his declared at his VFW speech as though, though the last decade had never happened, as though we were living in another century, as though globalization and the inescapable interdependence of nation-states is some kind of left-wing conspiracy to deny America its God-given right to rule over a world of subservient nations. Barack Obama has made many mistakes in policies. The failed reset with Russia comes to mind. Some of these mistakes, like his horrific handling of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, will have consequences for decades to come. But the one thing that President Obama understands at a deep, visceral level is that there is no longer any such thing as a unipolar or even bipolar world, and there will never be again. This is a president who realizes that in a world which, in which the borders and boundaries that divide us into distinct and separate nation states are becoming ever more porous, America could no longer dictate its will to other peoples. America American might can no longer be based on how many guns it can deploy, but on whether it can convince its enemies to lay down their guns first. American values can no longer be beholden to America's security and economic interests, and those interests can no longer supersede the fundamental desire of all peoples everywhere to live lives of freedom, dignity, and democracy, even if it means losing our perfectly pliable dicta dictatorial allies. Romney calls Obama's globalized view defeatist, even anti-American. 
It is neither. Our, on the contrary, it is both a rational and cognizant of reality. We need a president who does not base his candidacy upon nostalgia for a world that has not existed for half a century, a world in which America is the sole superpower. Where our economy dictates the world economy, our culture defines the world's culture, and our values and mores thrust upon the world whether they like it or not. We need a president who sees the world as it is and not as he fantasizes it should be. We need Barack Obama back in the White House. Reason number... Ooh, he writes a lot. Reason number eight. 90 reasons, 90 days, 90 reasons.